this, this actually characterizes the real numbers. There, are, there is no other field that, in fact, is an ordered field and has the least upper bound property. So let me summarize this by restating the theorem, which is in your book 119. R is an ordered field. It uh, extends Q, and it has the least upper bound property. OK, huge result. And something that's not something we're not going to prove, it takes a little more work, but it's, a, it's good to note is, in fact, there is no other field with this property. R is the only, in fact, the only ordered field with uh, the least upper bound property. Okay. So if you see any other field with the least upper bound property, I claim it is, in some sense, isomorphic to R. You'll be able to find a way to map the elements of that field into the elements of R in a one-to-one -one and on-to way that preserves the, the, uh, all the field operations. All others are isomorphic, with these properties are isomorphic to this one. Okay, so there's some amazing things that follow from having uh, the least upper bound property. So let me show you uh, a very cool consequence. Now that I know this, I don't have to think about real numbers as subsets of rational numbers, right? I mean, this was a construction that, uh, that showed us how to define the reals in terms of things we've defined before. But now, look, I could think of, if I want, this particular length, which we're calling the square root of 2 for reasons that have to do with this equation. I could, I could think of this as a supremum of a bunch of rational numbers, right? A supremum of a bunch of numbers, right? You can't stop me from thinking about it this way. Supremum of the collection of numbers that begins, let's say, 1, 1 1.4, 1.41, 1.414, 1.414, 1.414, et cetera, OK? Right? And I claim that's exactly what the decimal representation for a real number is doing. right? The shorthand for this, for saying, let's take the suprema of these creatures, the shorthand is to write this as 1.414.2135 dot, dot, dot. What this means is, give me the real number that is the supremum of this collection of rationals, OK? That's what the decimal representation is. How do I know this supremum exists? Because of the least upper bound property of the real numbers. Are you with me? So now you can think of real numbers as decimal representations, and you, you sort of know where this comes from, OK? OK, um, that's certainly one way, uh, one way to think about it. Of course, there's lots of other ways to define um, this particular length, but that's one. All right. Any questions so far about uh, our construction of the real numbers? Let me point out a, 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 a few, uh, something maybe even a little more general. So maybe more generally. You know, we, we, we constructed square roots here, right? You could convince yourself that if I want something whose square is 5, I could find that something, couldn't I, by making a definition very similar to that or a definition very similar to, uh, well, to that, but I could use suprema. So, for instance, I could define the nth root of a, a to the 1 over n, 
I could just define this as the supremum of all rationals whose nth power is less than a. Roots exist. That's really what I'm saying. Okay? And why can I do this? Well, this, this is a real number. It's a supremum of a bunch of rationals, each of which is clearly bounded. Real numbers have the least upper bound property. I know that supremum exists. Okay? And of course, what you have to convince yourself of is that uh, when you multiply this together n times, you will get a. Okay? So that takes a little bit. Uh, that takes a little bit of work, okay? But it does what you can ex does so you, what you expect. So you can check that if you take a to the, take this creature raised to the nth power, you will in fact get the thing that's equivalent, the, the cut that's equivalent to a. Okay. Question? Yes. Oh, interesting. Yeah, so the question is, what if I tried to solve the equation gamma squared equals minus 1? What if I tried to solve that? Yeah, um, that is an excellent question. Uh, so in this particular definition, I should probably be a little careful here uh, to point out that what would happen if you know, this was 2 and this was minus 1. What would go wrong with this definition? It's not a cut. Why not? What's not a cut? Well, yeah, actually what I'm thinking about here is the supremum of a bunch of real numbers, right? So I, I wasn't even thinking of this as cuts. I was thinking, uh, uh, sorry, rational numbers. Um, yeah, maybe. Uh, here, let me do R and Q. Right. But part of the problem is that the, the, this, this set would be empty, wouldn't it? Right? All these, these, there, there wouldn't be, uh, you wouldn't be take the supremum of anything, right? So this set would be empty if, so we need here, in this case, A to be uh, bigger than zero, else the set is empty and the supremum won't exist. So we don't have a way yet of dealing with finding solution to this equation when uh, the right-hand side is negative. Okay? We will uh, in very, very, very soon. Okay? Yes? Uh, yes, okay, so the question was, uh, what, if, uh, what if n were odd? So, for instance, if this is the third root, then uh, this would be what? Um, r cubed is less than something negative, which um, um, let's see. So I, I want to be a little careful here because in that case, if this were negative, let's say negative 1, and I put in a number like 